so the next subject which we need to study is artificial intelligence to start the subject first of all we need to discuss what is artificial intelligence what do you mean by artificial intelligence can you give a formal definition to artificial intelligence and what are the future scopes applications and and uh, uh, things which you can do with this particular subject now see this subject is not a new subject there are other branches of computer science which are fairly new like we have neural networks we have uh, even fuzzy logic which is fairly new and even the subject like theory of computation they are a new subjects but artificial intelligence subject this this was this subject was us with us from a very long time and where we need to, we need to understand that can we impart some human like capabilities to the computer system so that the computer system should be able to think like a human being and see we started this subject when uh, in around 1930s 1920s people started to see can we devise a system or can we devise a machine which can think like human being but that time the knowledge of computational power uh, or you can say the scientist was not having the enough knowledge about the computational power or you can say computational complexities of different problems but now in the current scenario current age we understand the computational complexities the computational power in a very depth as compared to the previous case that we have the better knowledge of computations and the computational power of our systems now when they devised the subject artificial intelligence now in 1950s a very famous scientist uh, alan turing who introduced the turing machine for uh, cracking the enigma code i think you all you all already seen the movie uh, related to this uh, so he said that we can say a system is intelligent if it can behave like a human being and for that he proposed a test and that test was called as a uh, turing test and the turing test what they say is we have a computer in a closed room and there's a interrogator which is sitting outside that particular room interrogator is asking some kind of questions from the computer and the computer should be able to answer those question in such a way that the interrogator should not be able to identify whether there is a human being who is answering the question or whether there is a computer who is answering the question and this particular computer is having some capabilities which is human like capabilities that it should be able to think it should be able to process information and it should be able to accept some kind of inputs and then it should be able to give some kind of outputs and those outputs can be categorized into several different things like initially it was very difficult for us to think that whether a computer should be able to deceive a person in games like chess because chess was considered as one of the most difficult games and they people used to think that chess uh, computer should not be will not be able to play chess because it requires a lot of understanding of the things how the other person is thinking or how what what are the kind of moves you need to take etc etc but later on in 1970s 80s we introduced some new programs uh, for playing chess which was actually very very fairly simple programs right so we introduced those programs so that a computer or the machine should be able to play a games like chess with a human being and it defeated the then world champion for the chess grand master of the chess and so for accepting some kind of input it should the computer should be having some kind of capabilities for natural language processing natural language processing means for example if you and me we are talking when we are talking we are having our con conversation in natural language whether it is english whether it is it is hindi and our brain takes the information it processes that information to give some kind of output from that particular information now to accept the input from the computer it is important and it is necessary so that the computer uh, so that you can say the computer should be able to process information in a human like manner it should be take the input from the human in a human like manner it should be process the input it should be able to understand the input and then it should be able to give the output from that particular input but some people are uh, some people they are not convinced this particular fact and they introduce one more test and that test was called as so you know chinese room argument and this char chinese room argument is such that that a, a system a computer system is inside a room 
and is that or you can say person is inside the room rather than saying computer system you can say person is inside the room which is called as the operator and he's having a very big book which is uh, related to the chinese literature it should be able to give some kind of uh, solutions or you can say answers to the problems which are asked by the interrogator about uh, and fr uh, from that book it should be processed that and should be given the output now there are two different meanings of this number one if there's a person who is sitting outside then if he's asking some questions now this operator who is sitting inside the room he takes those questions in chinese it checks or it matches the similar kind of questions from the book or can say the chinese literature and then based on that it processes the information to get give some output to that particular person but it does not mean that that person is having a clear cut understanding of the language now there are two things number one there is a cognition and second one is the understanding cognition means you should be able to recognize it you should be able to uh, you know uh, check uh, from the book whether th there is a particular output or there is some answers given to that particular problem and understanding means that you are able to you know deduce information you are able to uh, you can say uh, understanding the basic meanings of that particular language or uh, the meaning when, when, when I'm saying meaning that you should be able to understand it like human like fashion and then you should be able to give uh, some process give some information or process that particular information from this particular um, uh, particular questions okay that is the Chinese room argument now there are multiple areas where these computer systems are if uh, we are using them effectively and uh, so this artificial intelligence is you know they are used very much in a lot of different domains to solve different kind of problems to uh, deduce knowledge to gather new knowledge already if you have already available knowledge then it should be able to process that knowledge to so give some kind of new knowledge out of it now the most basic fundamental thing or I can say the most basic requirement for uh, artificial intelligence that you should be able to solve the problems then problems can be anything like initially it was very difficult for the uh, human to write a program related to how to search or how to sort from a given array now we know a lot of algorithms which are there we know that we know at least we, we people we know at least 5 to 10, 10 algorithms to sort some data or to search from a given data. Now, it should be now when I'm saying the artificial intelligent system, the it should be able to deduce or it should be able to find some new uh, ways to solve a particular problem. It can be using trial and error method, uh, and those kind of problems they have a certain kind of characteristics. When I'm saying certain kind of characteristics, that means those kind of problems are very much computationally hard, and we know there are see we know already know there are different kind of uh, computationally difficult problems which are categorized in form of NP, NP complete, and NP hard. I know that we uh, there are two types of problems. There's a P problem. There's an NP problem. We discussed about these kind of problems in algorithms as well as we discussed about these kind of algorithms in theory of computation like subjects. Now, P, the, when I'm saying P type of problem, that means these are the kind of problems which can be solved in polynomial time. And when I'm saying NP type of problem, that means these are the kind of problems which can be verified in polynomial time, but it does not matter or it does not mean that they can be solved in polynomial time. Solving a pro problem in polynomial time and uh, verifying the problem in polynomial time, there are two different things. Even if you cannot solve the problem in polynomial time, but still you can verify it po in polynomial time. Like you know the example of traveling salesman problem. Now that traveling salesman problem, even if you uh, uh, use different programming paradigms, whether it is dynamic programming, still you will not be able to solve that problem in polynomial time. No one has ever proved it, but we consider that we will not be able to solve it in polynomial time because um, till now from the very long time people are trying to prove whether P is equal to NP or not and this one of the NP hard problems that is a tra traveling salesman problem. Now we consider that uh, maybe this is the case but we cannot prove it maybe this is the case that no one will be able to solve the problem in polynomial time but still there exist proofs 
or whether if you already solved the problem there exist proofs which should be verify we should be able to verify that whether this particular uh, solution is correct or not or you can say there is a polynomial time verification algorithm which does exist and when i'm saying in case of artificial intelligence when i'm saying that system should be able to solve the problems now there there are some different characteristics of those problems like for example we'll be having some kind of state space and time trade off like we have for sorting algorithms if space increases then time decreases if time increases then space decreases that is called a space time trade off and we should be able to accelerate the process using the already acquired knowledge or using that already acquired knowledge we should be able to find proofs or deduce solutions to the problem that is called as heuristics just now that understand that there are different paradigms of problems we know that there's a problem which are linear programming problem which are already which are which are very hard problems then people used to think that no one is able to solve the linear programming problem then we solved the linear pro programming problems then we introduced the new types of you know new types of paradigms which are for integer programming then from integer programming we introduced which is dynamic programming we have studied the dynamic programming extensively in the subject algorithms and then we introduced the problems related to the heuristic uh, search problems okay and this heuristic search problems are you know difficult rather than than the dynamic programming where the dynamic programming is more inclined towards the optimality optimality means that we should be able to optimize something like we have zero one knapsack where we are trying to optimize we are trying to get the maximum profit from a given space in the same way we have the matrix chain multiplication problem and we have where we are trying to see what is the minimum number of multiplications are required to multiply two matrices we have longest common subsequence problem where we are trying to see that given two sequence strings will you be able to find a sequence which is longest of all the sequences which are present between these two strings so for for solving these kind of problems are dynamic programming problems but still just not just solving the problem is not not enough then we should be able to deduce the knowledge we should be able to deduce the concepts from particular knowledge that is really really important now just let me just give you a very simple example in the past there are a lot of problems which cannot be solved by human being because those problems are very huge in nature for example if you see uh for in graph algorithm there is a five color theorem and there is a four color theorem for the four color theorem it says that given a graph any graph whether you take a graph of any country whether you take a graph of anything it should be a planar graph but it should be planar graph given a planar graph what is the minimum number of colors required to color all the regions in the graph in such a way that no two adjacent regions are having the same color they should be having different colors and we need to identify what is the minimum number of colors required to color the graph and there is very for very long time there is no mathematical proof to it but we knew that maybe it is uh, the number of colors maybe four that we should be able to color the entire graph with four color colors if it is a planar graph right so th th this there is no no mathematical proof is not there but then when the computer system evolved when the computational power evolved then we introduced new methods to uh, solve that particular problem we have taken huge amount of inputs we have taken large amount of input we given that input to process it with to the computer and that computer processed it and then with large amount of very huge inputs we identified we proved that yes only four colors are required or only five colors are required to color the graphs so there are two uh, variants of this the graph coloring problem with number one is uh you want to color the vertices and what is the minimum number of colors required to color all the vertices so that no two adjacent vertices are having the same color and second one you want to color the regions that means no two regions are you know should should have the same kind of colors now when i'm seeing this uh this solving this kind of problems now this kind of so solving this kind of problems it is very easy because you are just giving uh some inputs uh, it should be able to process that particular input it should be able to say that yes you will be able to do this in four colors or no you will not be able to do this in four colors now mathematically using this computational power we proved it but mathematicians did not accept it because they need a more formal definition or because a more formal proofs 
rather than just giving some inputs and processing with those inputs because the number of inputs uh, we have taken for this kind of graph this kind of problem is very very huge and they are so huge that uh, even if a process a human being is trying to verify whether those uh, solutions are correct or not he needs hundreds of years to verify those problems so we need the computers we need the artificial intelligence now artificial intelligence still from that particular solution from that particular proof then we in introduce some simple steps which are formally formal steps to prove that uh, there are how many colors are required to color a given graph that is just a very simple example that in that area the artificial intelligence was used to prove some kind of theorems or to give proof of the theorems or to give proof of the problems which are already existing that is still one more area of artificial intelligence that means we are trying to deduce knowledge from the already existing system and now there are uh, four different domains of this number one is we have knowledge based system number one number two we have expert systems number three we have automated theorem provers number four we have formal verifications of these problems when i'm saying knowledge based system knowledge based system means we are trying to identify how to retrieve store and retrieve knowledge number two how to interpret facts rules and how to be able to uh, deduce knowledge from a given data and number three can we bridge the gap between the knowledge and the realization of that knowledge and number four what are the logics which you used in those knowledge and this knowledge may be very very huge trust me that it will be very very huge now when i'm saying there are knowledge logics uh, to deduce the knowledge logics means if there already existing some knowledge base now you should be able to take the help of the propositional calculus or predicate calculus to prove certain things that we already studied that other uh, thing in discrete mathematics the first chapter of discrete mathematics for kathros and book or any you know any generally when you study discrete mathematics the first chapter for the discrete mathematics is the propositional logic or propositions now using the propositional knowledge logic we can create new uh, you know we can generate new uh, uh, knowledge we can deduce new knowledge there are multiple theorems for this there is a modus ponens theorem it is a modus ponens theorem we use them to deduce knowledge in the same way this entire subject can be categorized into multiple parts like a uh, lot of things which include together to make one subject for example we have neural networks we have fuzzy networks we have a uh, different kind of you know uh, probabilistic network uh, probabilistic knowledge like we we know that there is a bayesian base theorem now using that base theorem we try to prove something what is the probability of doing something and uh, accordingly we try to uh gather or give some kind of knowledge from this so this artificial intelligence system again i'm saying it is a subject where we need we try to give human like thinking capabilities to the computer system and for this purposes we are going to have we are going to take a lot of aid from this computer system about uh, you know so that it should be able to take the knowledge it should be able to take the knowledge in natural language processing in natural language or it should be able to give output from that knowledge to the human beings so let us discuss about what are the topics which we need to cover for this subject and the some of those topics are common with the neural networks some of those topics are common with the fuzzy logics and we will discuss all that in this in this subject now the syllabus of the subject is as follows we are going to study number 1 the first part is what are the problems problems and search where we are going to study what is artificial intelligence then we will be studying problems spaces and search where we are going to define the problems as a state space search then production systems problem characteristics etc etc then we will be st studying what are the heuristic search techniques where we will be studying about the generate and test hill climbing best first search problem reduction constraint constraint satisfaction etc etc and then the second part will be the knowledge representation where we are going to study the knowledge representation issues and then we'll be studying what is uh, using the predicate knowledge to represent simple facts in logics then we are going to study about the presenting knowledge using rules uh, symbolic reasoning under uncertainty uh, then statistical reasoning is there and uh, 
a part of this will be studying what is game playing uh, planning understanding uh, this uh, small part which is natural language processing which we need don't need to study for this examination for the UGC net examination but for other courses we are going to cover it so I'm going to make courses based on this uh, there's a separate course will, which will be after this course which is uh, about creating intelligent systems we are going to have simple examples of uh, like creating a chatbot about a uh, chatbot is going to chat with a human being and it's, it should be able to reply to the human being uh, like a Turing test and then we are also going to study about the perception and actions and expert system fuzzy logics genetic algorithms and uh, neural networks etc etc so whatever we are going to study that is uh, for this artificial intelligence subject there is a mixture of uh, neural networks that is a mixture of soft computing artificial intelligence so that it is kind of a uh, you know soft computing you can say the artificial intelligence neural networks uh, and the fuzzy logics so it is kind of a soft computing for this so let's do one thing let us uh, dig into the subject and uh, we will uh, discuss about all these things in detail in the later part of videos but uh, I think you have a clear, clear cut idea as what is a artificial intelligence system that is it should be able to think like human being it should be able to solve problems like human being it should be able to we should be able to reduce more complex problems which uh, which may not be solved by, well, by human beings in the uh, coming uh, period okay so now let us look into this and let us uh, dig deep into the subject